uh, but it doesn't matter. We're going to jump into game number one of the final lower bracket match, the final stage one match that I'm covering on my channel for this event um, is Daniel versus Chronic. Now, they played on my channel pretty recently, these two, and it was a very close game, but it was a game where Chronic was able to come out on top, much to the surprise of the majority of the viewers who tuned in, including myself. I thought Daniel would have the edge, but Chronic was uh, really on form. That was kind of what confirmed to me that Chronic was back. Um, look at this defense from Chronic early on. Daniel's got him on the ropes here, but Chronic is fighting back. A nice little mind game there by Daniel. We'll open the scoring. And we've got Daniel on the Fennec today. He's gone through, I think, pretty much every car since he started yesterday. Match one that he played on my channel was uh, the Dominus. It didn't go too well against Evo when he did play the Dom. Um, then I think he switched to the Octane. Can you guys confirm? Did Daniel play the lower bracket round one yesterday um, in the Octane? I believe he did, right? And uh, today he's in the Fennec. That's a banger from Chronic for 1-1. Or did he switch to the Fennec yesterday as well? I, th I thought he fit switched to the Octane. I've not had a chance to go back and watch it yet, but somebody, uh, I, th I believe somebody in my chat told me he did play Octane. So he's trying a bit of everything. Definitely not feeling fully comfortable. Um, Chronic deciding that it's going to be too risky to go for the back corner boost seal there. Has to turn around and pressure the ball instead. That leaves him a bit stranded. As he tries to deal with Daniel's offense again. So, so far today, well, so far in this first game, we've not really seen too much, but we have seen a lot of ground game out of Daniel. We've seen a low 50-50 there. We saw a complete mind game for the first goal. And look at the halfway line flick as well. Well, this is a brand new Daniel compared to what we saw in round one yesterday. The lower of the, well, it was the upper bracket then, but round one of stage one. Now we're lower bracket and he is completely um, slowing down his game. He's going full control as apparently Jack would call it full bot Fennec. Uh, Chronic trying to pinch to threaten a shot, it doesn't really do too much. Daniel's going to run this one in, I imagine. Yes, indeed he is after... Oh, no, he misread the bounce. Well, I thought he was going to get that after the bounce. He still is, even after misreading the bounce. That's quite interesting. So, I, I, I thought Daniel was just going to take his time with this one, because Chronic really lunged into the corner. Daniel didn't need to rush it, but he almost uh, messed that one up. Luckily, he had such a good flick initially that Chronic was completely out of the game. That's going to be 4-1. Chronic is having a horrendous start to the game. He's uh, been sent to the lower bracket yesterday by apparently Jack, and now he's in lower round two against Daniel. The two, well, for me at least, favorites going into this tournament were apparently Jack and Daniel, and uh, Chronix had to play both of them one after another. Daniel's up by four goals now. Perfect snipe across the goal to the top corner. Chronic was in the area, but he wasn't sure if he's supposed to be jumping here. He wasn't sure if he's supposed to be managing his boost, and uh, he conceded yet again against Daniel's consistent Fennec gameplay. No way is he saved this. What a save by Daniel. He's got a little flip here to work with as well. He's even got a counter attack off this play. I mean, that is an unbelievable save. He just looks so composed in the Fennec today. If this isn't an illustration of the different ways that just a car change can make you play, then I don't know what is because Daniel just looks so composed, so controlled, so comfortable on the field compared to yesterday where he looked Awkward, he didn't really know if he should be going for the big clips or not. But today he knows exactly what to do. Yes, indeed, best of five. Uh, is apparently Jack playing soon? Yeah, Jack's going to be playing the winner of the other lower bracket round one match um, after this. So, winner of this match will play against Lion Blaze in about an hour and a half from now. But before that, we're going to have apparently Jack against the winner of Evo versus AJ, which is currently being played out on Fear's channel. I've uh, heard early score there is that Evo is destroying AJ in game one. So that's a big win for Evo if you can get one. AJ definitely the favorite in that matchup. I mean, most people would say that Evo's already done pretty well to get a win in this tournament on Daniel. I mean, that's already a good result for him, even if he loses everything else he plays. Um, of course, that's no disrespect to Evo. It's just trying to explain to you how stacked this event is. The crazy thing is it could be even more stacked if players like Jan, Card, 
Uh, first killer, you know, get into the mix. All these players right now on the USC server. Giggy's YX, thanks for Gig, sorry YX, thanks for the brand new private. I can't read. Apparently, T Dog, thanks for the 14 month private. Also, Snowsbury, thanks for the 67 month tier one. And it's going to finally get another goal back, but he's got a long way to go. Let's see if he can continue to have more success from the Saturn Circle here. Iconic Alec, thanks for the 12 month prime. He says, I suck at remembering to sub. Finally hit a year after watching for three years with prime the entire time. Oh no, well, I hope you've been using the prime on someone else when you forgot to use it in my channel. I mean, I, I wouldn't hold it against you if you do. I pretty much just use my prime whenever I realize I've got it up. Where, wherever stream I'm in, I just drop it because I'm like, oh well. If I don't do it now, I'm going to forget about it for another week. So, yeah guys, always remember to check and see if your prime is available. And uh, yeah, just chuck it. Honestly, just on any streamer that you're in, just use the Prime. It's better to use it um, and then get it back more quickly than it is to hold on to it. Try to wait for your favorite streamer to go live, especially if they're as inconsistent as me. What a snipe that is. Daniel just effortlessly pinches the bottom corner shot. Past Chronic really silencing any potential chance of a comeback here. Phenomenal start for Daniel. He's trying to make a return through the lower bracket here. If you can get past Chronic, he's right back into the exact same stage of the tournament as apparently Jack and Lion Blaze, who made it in through uppers yesterday. Daniel's just completely running the show in the midfield here. Chronic does not have any idea how to handle Fennec Daniel. Oh my goodness, to talk about Prime 1, so look at all of you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, thank you, by the way, to Bread Gnome for the brand new Prime at the start of the stream, before I forget you. It's getting buried quickly by Strikers Mojo with the 16 month prime, 17 month prime from High V. Um, we've also got Stranded 2189 with a brand new prime, Crispy Maestro with a brand new prime, and Dr. Thrax with a brand, uh, two month prime, sorry. As well as brand new primes from Nixion Strange and Mini Catfish. And another one from uh, Plugger SZN and Terminus 41. You guys, you guys are ridiculous. Um, good time to be doing it though, to be honest, since we are in the middle of a game. Not just in the middle of a game, or uh, but when did I say in the middle of a game? I meant to say in the middle of two games, <laughs> or between two games. Um, and now we're not even in any game at all. We're back in the main menu. We got kicked. So let's get back in. If we can. I need to actually be the one to make the lobby. Because if I, if I just join their party, I won't be able to use admin mode should I need to. Uh, so I'll just wait for them to get back out here. Plain corn, thanks to the seven month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Why does it say boost above the chat? Is that the new name for the scam train? Twitch rebranded scam train into boost. Or what was that? I'm such a bad streamer, I just don't know what that is. Boost train. Did, when did that get renamed? Has that, been, has that been called a boost train for ages and I just didn't even know? I swear I'm not. Yeah, it used to be called a hype train. It's basically Twitch's uh, way to try and get people to jump onto sub... Uh, bandwagons is just to call it a hype train. Now it's got, is it called a boost train? Level, <laughs> level 2 boost train? That's so funny. I wonder what the meeting was like when they decided to rename that. You know, a bunch of corporate suits get in a room and they're like, you know what? You know what's causing our revenue at Twitch to drop? We, re we really need to name hype train boost train. Yeah, that's going to get us through the next quarter in the plus. Great stuff. Oh, it's still called a hype train for you. It definitely says boost train, <laughs> boost train on my chat, uh, on my screen. Maybe I've got the outdated broadcast, uh, not broadcast, sorry. The outdated uh, internet browser is the word I'm looking for. Space Cat, thanks for the time on the Prime. Also, MQUC98, thanks for the brand new Prime. And, uh, yeah, really, if I've forgotten anyone there, because I know a lot of you subbed, just uh, let me know in my chat. I'm trying to catch them all. I'll try and keep up between games. We're back into it now. Let's see if Chronic can figure out how to handle Daniel in the Fennec today. I mean, Daniel just looked completely solid. Every criticism I've had for him um, yesterday when he was in the Dominus against Evo, completely gone. Uh, this is a different Daniel that we're seeing today. And it's it's even a different looking Daniel from any Daniel that we've seen. Am I, am I, am I the only one thinking that? Or has Daniel ever played like this? Because, you know, we're used to seeing mostly Octane Daniel, occasionally Fennec Daniel. But the way that Daniel usually played ones, uh, when he was just the king of North American ones, and the way that he'd usually play ones when he's in tournaments, 
was to just clip on his opponents, just pace around the field, controlling boost, controlling position, controlling the ball, and just really not looking vulnerable at all, no matter who you put him up against. But today he's just, he's letting Chronic do his thing and still handling it. I mean, this, this is a very, very interesting style that we're seeing from Daniel here. I, I personally, I like it really well. Uh, I like it really well. I like it a lot, I should say. I think it's working really well. I was trying to say those two things at the same time. Because it just doesn't look like he's even taking any risks. I mean, Daniel's good enough mechanically that he can take what would be considered a risk for another player. And for him, it's not even risky because his recovery mechanics are out of this world. But today, he's not really even taking many risks. Chronic's having to be so clinical. He has been clinical his last two possession plays. Nice timing on that clear. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but that timing has to be so accurate. Um, if you hit that too early, it's going to clip Daniel's car before he lands, and if you hit it too late, you give Daniel time to jump back up again. Daniel's going to think about the counter-attack here. Instead, sticks to the ball as he doesn't get a clean contact on the first try. He has to leave out to midfield as Chronic collects the ball in the corner. Immediately, though, Daniel closes the gap, and... Pressures Chronic. Almost takes the ball off him. Now he will. And even though he's in the Fennec with a solid gameplay, he's still got those threatening aerial plays. This one off the ground. Little power slide on the turn there from Daniel. Just repositioning, allowing the ball to roll that little bit further back before getting the attack going. And uh, Chronic just... He's had enough. He's had enough of 50-50s against Daniel. Just plays for the bump instead. It does make it work. That's not the best flick, though, by Chronic. He's not really forced Daniel out of position with this one. And if you don't force Daniel out of position, then you're probably going to suffer a booming shot on the counter. That's something that we are seeing um, from Daniel today that you do expect to see from him every time he jumps on the field. Anytime you give him half a look at the goal, he absolutely slams it into the net. He's just one of those players that I use as an example of a player who can get full power no matter what position, what angle, what boost total you put him on. He can always hit the ball full power um, if he feels like it. That's lovely from Chronic. He's hanging in this one. Game one got away from him, but this one he's keeping competitive. Appreciate all, all the new primes once again, guys. Thanks to Gunnar Simon, Yundem, uh, McBeaverton, and Astro DPT for the brand new primes. Welcome to the channel. Hopefully you're enjoying the tournament tonight. Another reminder that if you do want to catch the other um, lower round two match that is currently ongoing, then click on the squad stream or head over to Fear's channel, AJ versus Evo over there. Sounds like AJ on the comeback trail as he attempts to tie the series. At least I believe that it was Evo that went away with the game one win. Let's look at this composure from Daniel again. No urgency at all. He's got the two goal lead and he's just completely placing every touch. It's not just every shot that he's placing. He's placing every single touch and every single... Um, Hits on the ball into a position that Chronic can't handle. Probably the most effortless playstyle I've ever seen from Daniel, and you know, dare I say it, probably the most, you know, replicatable playstyle I've ever seen from Daniel as well. I feel like, for once, a lot of you watching will be thinking, why don't I do this? <laughs> Usually when Daniel plays, you're thinking, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to even bother trying that. Not going to bother trying that either. Yeah, that's impossible. Okay, yeah, Daniel's just done something I'm never going to do in 10 years of playing this game. But today, he's just... He's playing so simply, but so effectively as well. It's something that we don't often see coming out of the very best players in North America. And even Lion Blaze yesterday. Grounded, certainly, but controlled... I wouldn't say like this, no, a Daniel with another exemplary long shot makes it 6-3, but Chronic just doesn't have any way of reading Daniel today. He just can't get in his comfort zone at all. Daniel continues to dominate. M Citra 28 thanks to the Prime and also OG Tria, thanks to the uh, brand new tier 1. Drake with the brand new Prime. Uh, Sieg, Sieg Fault 21. Thanks for the brand new tier 1. Daniel's just toying with Chronic here. I mean, Chronic trying everything. 
And Daniel's just swatting away every shot that he puts on net, as if to say, why even bother? Okay, finally Chronic gets one through. He's still not done with this game. But Daniel has really made him work for this. He almost saved this one as well. He's got 12 boosts to his name, just <laughs> lunges off the post. And uh, had he been a bit lower, that would have worked as well. But okay, can Chronic get a good kickoff? He has to get an immediate possession here. If not a kickoff goal, tries it with a wave dash recovery. Daniel's too solid. I mean, Chronic couldn't really do much here. It's the way that Daniel landed just prevented Chronic from using his wave dash. If Chronic wave dash is there, he's just going to bump Daniel into the ball. So, nothing to be done. Daniel, too good. And this is uh, a pretty scary sight for any one in this tournament who's tuning into this match, I'm sure. They would have loved the prospect of playing against Daniel yesterday in the Dominus, but Fennec really does look different. Yeah, these games are going to be posted to my YouTube over the next week or so, so if you do miss them, uh, well, the Twitch VOD's free to view. You can watch that if you want to, um, but I will be posting these to my YouTube channel over the course of the next week, and uh, you can watch them there with a nicer, let's be honest, a, ni a nicer video player. Like, Twitch is great. For a lot of things but YouTube still got their number when it comes to the video player one thing I really would like to see Twitch do um, is up the discoverability because I was trying to like I, I saw somebody streaming in public the other day uh, I was I was out and about and I saw somebody streaming and I knew that they were they were definitely streaming on Twitch um, because they kept talking to their chat in the way that Twitch streamers talk to their chat in public. I was like, okay, that's definitely a streamer. Um, and I was, I was thinking, you know, if somebody wanted to find that streamer without asking them who they are, they, how on earth would they go about that? Like, how, how would you find a streamer? Because if you try and, you know, find a stream on Twitch and you, there, nobody uses the tags feature. Like, you don't go live and put a bunch of tags in your stream. Like, uh, apart from what game you're playing, I think that's pretty much it. So it's very difficult to discover new channels um, outside of just like scrolling down in a game section that you like. Nice flick again from Daniel. Nothing crazy, just simple stuff with the side flip technique. And although it's simple, it's been super effective today. As he tries to sweep Chronic and probably the most effortless way that anyone's ever swept Chronic. I mean, usually when Chronic's been swept in the past, it's by somebody frantically pressuring him as Chronic historically has, you know, struggled the most against players who just rush into him, take away all the space that he uh, thrives if he's given and uh, try and get him on the back foot early. But that's not really what Daniel's tried to do. He's just letting Chronic do whatever he wants and then Getting the ball past him anyway. Oh, that's an unbelievable save though by Chronic. He's back on the ball as well. Just an immaculate recovery after hitting the ball into his own crossbar at point blank range. When was Daniel's ones prime? Um, well, there was a good while where the best ones players in the world were probably um, Jack. Daniel, Jorias, and Khaled, they were pretty clear, those four. They were pretty clear of everybody else. And then I think Daniel beat Khaled in a tournament and Jack um, closely after then. So that was probably when you could say Daniel peaked in terms of results because he was he was already like confirmed. That was, you know, top four in some order and then he beat two of the other top four back to back. But uh, I think it was relatively short-lived because not long after that, Jack got the revenge win on Daniel and Jory has beat him as well. So there was a brief moment, I think, where you could say that Daniel was just, you know, the best. And there wouldn't be any question about it. Um, but the top four at that time, they all played each other quite a lot. Um, yeah, Jack got a win on Daniel. Khaled got a win on Jack. Jory has got a win on Daniel. So it would be pretty hard to say he was number one um, outside of that window where he beat um, Khaled and Jack in close succession uh, yeah since then a lot of other players have risen to the top of the ranks and a couple of other players I mean Chronic's another one of those who's just made a return to his best and uh, getting back in the mix so yeah, Daniel sees in terms of results in terms of dominate, uh, uh, dominance he's not been 
um, the guy. Just without question, for a while. But he's certainly still up there. I mean, you'd be silly not to put Daniel in a top 10 worldwide at the moment. That would just be ridiculous. And the, You know, you definitely have to think about him in any top 5 right now as well. Um, I had him as second seed coming into this behind Jack. And that looks like it could easily, you know, be the, the grand final if Daniel keeps playing like this. They will be on different sides of the bracket, it's worth mentioning. Winner of this goes on to play against Lion Blaze in the semis. Yeah, Daniel did as well beat First Killer and Jack uh, back to back. Um, but that was a less... I mean, first killer, I think, was on his return. So, it was, I mean, getting a win against somebody who's not played ones competitive for like a year or half a year or even three months. I can't remember how long it was, but, you know, getting a win on somebody who's just made a comeback is harder to know exactly where that places you compared to getting a win against somebody who's active. Um, oh, that's such a great save. I mean, that, just, that save just speaks to how Daniel's played this series today. Just waits for Chronic to fly by him and then drives into the ball. Look at this. He's not even air rolling. He's full ball Fennec mode. Air steer dunk on the save after air dribbling the ball close to the net. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this from Daniel. <laughs> but I think Jack's onto something. The bot Fennec mechanics are just simply different. Who needs air roll? <laughs> He's playing like exotic right now. He actually is. This is, is this exotic? It's NA exotic. It really is. But it looks unstoppable at the same time. I mean, I'm not saying that to try and put down on Daniel's uh, play here in any way. I want you guys to understand that this is incredibly effective gameplay, but it's effortless. He's just making it look so easy. Did Daniel unbind air roll and become a better player? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> the full bot Fennec is it's the meta. Jack's onto something. He switched to Fennec, became the best player in NA in threes. And there everybody, Daniel switches to Fennec mid-tournament and looks like a brand new version of himself who anyone is going to struggle to, you know, get the ball past, far less beat. He has decimated Chronic in this matchup. Made him look like he shouldn't even belong in the same lobby, never mind tournament. And that's the same Chronic who yesterday took down AJ um, and only dropped to the upper bracket at the hands of apparently Jack, who's also looks spectacular. So Chronic's in form. Don't get mistaken, if you didn't catch the tournament yesterday, Chronic is in good form, but Daniel's just made him look out of place in this match. Chronic just couldn't get a handle on him. I think anything that you expected about Daniel coming into this match, it's been the opposite. He, he surely has been completely caught off guard, not just with how Daniel's played, but the, the, just the consistency of Daniel's gameplay as well. Complete sweep. Daniel into the semis. He'll play against the Lion Blaze in just over an hour's time. But uh, before then, we're going to have apparently Jack against the winner on Fear's stream. I don't think Fear is uh, done with his match. It wasn't a sweep over there. GG's. Chronic not able to make the money, not able to make the top four. Daniel does so with a celebratory flip reset, which again, he made to look easy. Just like everything else in this uh, game and in this series. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> that was that was really cool to see. Just a new Daniel. Completely new day, new Daniel. And uh, new play style as well, it would seem. 